You are scrolling through your phone when the power dies, not flickers, dies. Every house on your block goes dark in the same second. Car alarms start wailing. Someone three doors down is already screaming. You have maybe 30 minutes before panic becomes a crowd and crowds become mobs. You need shelter, real shelter, not your apartment with its flimsy deadbolt and ground floor windows, the gym down the street, the mall, that old warehouse by the highway, they all look like buildings, but only some of them are structures that keep you alive. The rest are traps with doors. In the first 72 hours, picking wrong means you do not get a second chance. This is not about bunkers or compounds. This is about the buildings already around you. Because when collapse happens, architecture turns into biology. Four walls do not mean safety. They mean variables, heat retention, sight lines, noise signature, resource density, defensibility. Today, we are ranking real, everyday structures by survival science. Then we are walking through the buildings people run toward that quietly turn into coffins. In timeline 12K, they thought floor-to-ceiling windows were tactical advantages. It made sense at the time. You could see threats coming. Watch the street. Monitor movement. Visibility equals awareness equals safety. The kind of logic that sounds brilliant until you remember that glass works both directions. Here is what actually happens. You are inside a structure with 360 degree transparency. That means everyone outside can see you, your movements, your supplies. Whether you are sleeping, glass does not give you an advantage. It turns you into an exhibit. Exhibits attract crowds. Crowds attract problems. Then there is the structural problem. Tempered glass shatters under impact. A brick, a pipe, a desperate human with a tire iron. One hit and your walls are gone. Now you are defending a building with no barriers and razor sharp debris everywhere. Try to move fast across broken glass in the dark and your feet turn into tenderized meat in under 10 seconds. And sound? Glass is an excellent conductor of noise. Every conversation leaks outside. You are broadcasting the dinner bell to every hungry mammal in a two block radius. Lesson, visibility is a liability when everyone can see you dying. In timeline 44N, they prioritized comfort over survival. Gyms looked like paradise. Showers, lockers, protein powder, weight equipment you could use for barricades. Psychologically, it felt like a win. Clean, organized, familiar. Reality did not get the memo. Gyms are designed for high traffic and open flow. Wide entrances, glass doors, no defensible positions. You cannot bottleneck attackers when there are four ways in and each one is wide enough for three people shoulder to shoulder. You are defending an airplane hangar with dumbbells and optimism. Then there are resources. Protein powder runs out. Municipal water shuts off when pressure dies, which usually happens within six hours of grid failure. Those showers you wanted? Dry? The lockers? Looted by day two because everyone had the same brilliant idea. Gyms are echo chambers. Every sound amplifies and travels. You might as well install a neon sign that says, free protein, bring weapons. Thermodynamics delivers the final insult. Gyms are built with high ceilings and ventilation for cooling. Excellent for cooling off after leg day. Equally excellent for freezing to death after civilization ends. You lose core body temperature faster than you can burn calories trying to stay warm. Lesson, showers do not matter when you die from exposure. In timeline 22Z, they thought size equaled safety. Warehouses are everywhere. They look sturdy, lots of storage space, easy to imagine setting up a base. It is the kind of structure that looks like it was designed for survival. Here is the problem. Warehouses are designed for forklifts, not humans. Loading docks, massive roll-up doors, side entrances for truck access. You have four to six entry points, all of them large enough to drive a vehicle through. Defending that requires a team of 12 and round-the-clock rotations. You do not have 12 people. You have you, maybe two others, and exhaustion setting in by hour 30. Empty warehouses are acoustic nightmares. Footsteps echo for 30 meters. You cannot hear threats approaching because every noise you make drowns out external sound. You are functionally deaf to danger while advertising exactly where you are. Heating is the killer. In winter, interior temperatures drop to within 5 degrees of outside in about 2 hours. You will burn 3,000 calories per day just to not freeze. Your food stores evaporate in a week. Physics bills by the calorie, not the square meter. Lesson. Big buildings need big teams. 
you do not have one. In timeline 88R, they thought retail density meant long-term survival. Malls are the obvious choice. Food courts, pharmacies, clothing, everything you need in one climate-controlled complex. It is a prepper fantasy. Walk in, lock the doors, live off the supplies for months. Simple math, except human behavior ruins math. Everyone thinks of malls. Day one, you are competing with hundreds of people who had the same idea. That is not scavenging. That is a riot with a roof. By hour six, the food court is stripped. By day two, the food court becomes a hunger arena where people stab each other over mustard packets. Then there is structure. Malls are designed for consumer flow. Multiple entrances. Anchor stores with their own access points. Even if you barricade the main entrance, there are many other ways in. Service corridors. Loading docks. Emergency exits that cannot be locked from inside because of fire codes. You are defending a maze. There are no choke points. When the grid fails, you are in a pitch black labyrinth with no airflow. In summer, interior heat climbs toward 38 Celsius within 12 hours. In winter, it is a concrete freezer. Either way, you are slow roasting in consumer darkness or flash freezing while someone debates whether your shoes are worth murder. They are. Lesson, gold mines attract miners, most of them armed. In timeline 61C, they confused vacant with secure. Abandoned buildings look perfect. No one around, no immediate threats. You can move in, set up, and avoid the chaos. It is the prepper equivalent of finding a quiet corner during a house party. Logical, private, fatal. Here is why. Abandoned buildings are abandoned for a reason. Major structural damage. Environments have mold or asbestos, compromised foundations. The reason it is empty is because it is failing. You are moving into a structure that is already halfway to collapse. You are betting your life on architecture that is already lost. Then there is the human element. Abandoned buildings attract other desperate people. Squatters, addicts, looters. You are not the first person to think of it. You are just the newest contestant in a game show called Who Dies Here Next? No utilities, no water, no heat. You will spend eight hours a day just finding enough calories and clean water to survive the next 24 hours. That is not survival. That is auditioning for a documentary about poor choices. This is not theory. It is thermodynamics with teeth. Lesson, empty does not mean safe. It means everyone else already left. Let us talk about what actually matters. Architecture is not aesthetic. It is applied physics. Every structure has a survival profile based on four variables. Defensibility, resource access, thermal efficiency, noise signature. Get three out of four right and you survive the first week. Get two of them wrong and you are a statistic by day four. Defensibility is geometry. You want limited entry points, narrow corridors, brick or concrete construction that stops projectiles, small windows set high, libraries, small post offices, older fire stations. These buildings were designed before open concept became trendy. They have load-bearing walls, solid doors, functional barriers. Glass front retail is not a barrier. It is a suggestion. A suggestion written in breakable material by architects who assumed society would continue existing. Resource access. Municipal water pressure dies within about six hours of grid failure. After that, you are collecting rainwater. Food is distance. Every scavenging trip burns around 500 calories. If your building is two kilometers from the nearest grocery store, you are spending a thousand calories on a round trip. You need to net positive at least 2,000 calories per day. Otherwise, you are just walking yourself into the ground. Thermal efficiency. Human core temperature is 37 Celsius. Drop below 35 and you are hypothermic. Cold exposure triples caloric burn. You are now burning 6,000 calories daily just to not freeze. Buildings with low ceilings retain heat. Brick and concrete have high thermal mass. Metal structures lose heat almost as fast as you generate it. Noise signature. Empty warehouses turn footsteps into gunshots. Smaller buildings with furnished interiors dampen sound. Carpets. Curtains. Books. A library is functionally silent. 
A gym echoes for 30 seconds after you drop a weight. In one, you hear danger. In the other, you are the danger soundtrack. Physics does not negotiate. Here is what you are actually looking for. Small libraries, brick construction, limited entrances, high window placement, paper for fire starter, thermal retention is excellent, noise dampening is maximum, defensibility is high because you can barricade two doors and monitor from elevated positions using book stacks as cover. Time window. Claim within the first 12 hours. After that, every literate survivor has the same idea. Older post offices, concrete or brick. Built before 1970, when security was not an afterthought. Narrow entrances, loading docks with rolling doors you can lock from inside, often located near commercial districts for scavenging access. The downside, everyone knows where they are. You will have company. Plan for negotiation or conflict by hour 18. Small veterinary clinics, medical supplies, antibiotics, surgical tools. Most people overlook them because they are busy dying at human hospitals. Vet clinics have everything you need in concentrations designed for 60 kilogram mammals. You qualify. Secure doors built to contain frightened animals. They will also contain frightened humans, usually located in residential areas where foot traffic drops to zero after hour six. Defensibility, high. Resource density, medium. Thermal efficiency, good. Noise signature, low. Hardware stores, tools, tarps, rope, building materials. The entire store is a resource. The problem, everyone knows this. It will be stripped within 48 hours. If you can get there first and hold it, you have leverage for three months. Defensibility is low. You need a team of four at minimum and the patience to sleep in shifts. Panic burns calories faster than running, so pack extra protein whether you like it or not. Small urgent care facilities, not hospitals. Those are war zones by hour 12. Urgent care clinics have medical supplies, limited entry points, and professional grade locks. Compact layouts, waiting rooms you can barricade. Located in suburban areas with moderate scavenging access. Resource value, high. Competition level, medium. Thermal efficiency, excellent because small spaces heat faster with body warmth alone. The first 72 hours are triage. You are not optimizing. You are surviving long enough to think clearly again. Now let us talk about where you die. Car washes. Open on multiple sides. Metal frame construction with almost zero thermal retention. Designed for water drainage, which means you are standing in puddles when it rains. Acoustically disastrous. No resources. No defensibility. No reason to be there except bad instincts trying to cosplay logic. Mall food courts. Glass storefronts. Central locations surrounded by corridors. They attract every desperate person within walking distance. Food is gone by day one. You are fighting over crumbs in a fishbowl while 50 people watch from the mezzanine. You are a target from the moment you step into the open. Glass front gyms. We already covered this, but it bears repeating because people keep choosing them. Visibility works against you. Structural integrity is a punchline. Thermal efficiency is hypothermic. The only thing a gym provides is a well-lit place to get killed while everyone outside watches. It is a stadium where you are the only sport. Big box retail stores, home improvement chains, department stores, furniture warehouses. They are too large to secure, too visible to hide, too popular to avoid conflict. You will spend 16 hours a day defending entrances and die anyway because you cannot cover all the angles. The apocalypse does not care about your feelings. Here is where humans fail consistently. Familiarity bias. People gravitate toward buildings they know. The gym they went to every Tuesday. The mall where they shopped. Familiarity feels like safety. It is not. It is cognitive laziness. Your brain is prioritizing comfort over survival because evolution did not prepare you for societal collapse. Stress hormones shut down executive function. You revert to patterns. Patterns get you killed. Survivors override instinct with analysis. Four variables, no emotion, 
just math. Optimism bias. The belief that bad outcomes happen to other people. You see the crowd forming outside the mall and think you will get in and out before violence starts. You will not. You see the gym's glass walls and think no one will attack because people are basically good. They are not. They are basically desperate. Desperation makes mammals unpredictable and aggressive. 87% of people in collapse scenarios make decisions based on hope rather than data. Hope is your brain writing checks that physics will not cash. Herd mentality. Crowds feel like safety. Except crowds attract attention. They consume resources faster. They amplify conflict. Every additional human increases caloric demand, reduces mobility, and adds conflict vectors. Past four people, you are not a team. You are a mobile argument that is not started yet. Small groups survive. Large groups implode. Every time. Decision paralysis. Too many options create cognitive overload. You stand outside three buildings, trying to decide which one is optimal, while the 30-minute window closes. By the time you decide, the smart people are already inside, and you are outside debating which dumpster has the best feng shui. Elevated cortisol levels reduce decision-making speed by around 40%. Survivors make imperfect decisions fast. Casualties make perfect decisions too late. This is not theory. It is neuroscience with consequences. Let us recap. Buildings are physics problems with doors. Defensibility matters more than size. Resources matter more than comfort. Thermal efficiency matters more than aesthetics. Noise signature decides whether you are invisible or a beacon. Libraries, post offices, vet clinics, urgent care facilities, hardware stores, if you are fast and armed. These structures give you a week to think. Gyms, malls, warehouses, car washes, glass front anything, these are suggestions pretending to be shelters. You will die of exposure, violence, or starvation while standing in a building that only looks like safety from the outside. The difference between survivors and statistics is site selection. You have about 30 minutes after collapse before crowds form and options disappear. You can evaluate structures now, or you can guess later when blood sugar makes you stupid. Architecture determines biology. Four walls do not mean survival, they mean variables. Run the numbers, trust the math, ignore your instincts, because your instincts evolved for lions, not societal collapse. You can prepare now or hope thermodynamics develops empathy. Your move.